Auto Brewery Syndrome Auto Brewery Syndrome is a rare disease in which a person's body becomes an actual brewery with no required beer-making equipment. Medical reports suggest fewer than 100 cases have been documented worldwide. It's like having a tiny alcohol distillery running inside you 24-7. The syndrome occurs when an overgrowth of yeast in the gut goes into overdrive, fermenting carbs and sugars a person consumes into ethanol, booze, brewing beer from the inside out. People with this condition can exhibit signs of drunkenness, like slurred speech and impaired coordination without ever taking a sip. They could show up to work or class completely totaled but swearing they're 100% sober. In severe cases, dangerously high blood alcohol levels require medical treatment because constantly being brutiful on the inside takes its toll. Managing it involves starving the yeast of their favorite sugary ingredients. Mobius Syndrome Mobius Syndrome is a rare condition that affects approximately 1 in 50,000 to 1 in 500,000 newborns. Children born with this syndrome have problems with their facial movements and expressions. Their faces may seem quite still or have very little movement and expression. This is because the nerves that control the facial muscles are not working correctly. The reason for this is not fully understood, but it is thought to be caused by something during pregnancy when the baby was developing in the womb. It's not something that can be passed down from parents to children. Children with Mobius syndrome often have trouble with simple things like smiling, frowning, or blinking their eyes. Their faces may appear quite flat or blank. They may also have difficulty with other movements like walking properly, gripping things, and moving their eyes from side to side or up and down. While there is no cure for Mobius syndrome, treatments are available to help with some of the symptoms. These can include things like speech therapy, physical therapy, or even surgery in some cases. Fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva It is estimated to occur in approximately 1 in 2 million individuals worldwide, making it one of the rarest genetic conditions known. The body develops bones in abnormal places like muscles, tendons, and other connective tissues. Imagine your body getting confused and turning those soft tissues into rock solid. It starts in childhood with kids developing malformed big toes. As they grow older, any minor injury or overuse of muscles can trigger new bone formation. Over time, this extra bone locks up their movement, making it difficult to move around freely. There's no cure yet, but avoiding injuries is key to preventing rapid worsening. Even falling, getting immunizations, or doing dental work can spark new bone growth flare-ups. Progeria Syndrome Progeria is a very rare genetic condition that causes premature aging in kids. Kids with progeria look like typical newborns, but around one year old they start aging rapidly. It affects around 400 children worldwide at any given time, roughly 1 in 20 million people. Their skin becomes thin and wrinkled, their hair falls out, and their bodies don't grow as they should. Instead of growing taller, their bodies also age faster on the inside. This accelerated aging strains their hearts, blood vessels, and other organs. This rapid aging is caused by a faulty gene that makes an abnormal protein. This protein messes with the inside of cells, like having a tiny wrench in your bike gears. But this wrench causes your gears to age 50 times faster than usual. The life expectancy for individuals with progeria is tragically short as it is incurable. Most children with progeria live to an average age of about 13 years, with the majority of deaths occurring from complications of atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, such as heart attacks or stroke. Undine's Curse Undine's Curse is a genetic disorder estimated to occur in approximately 1 in 200,000 to 1 in 1 million live births, where the brain forgets to tell the body to breathe normally. Babies born with this seem perfectly healthy at first, but soon after birth, their brain stops sending the right signals to the muscles that control breathing. This means they can't automatically breathe properly while sleeping or unconscious. Their bodies don't automatically respond as strongly to rising carbon dioxide levels in the blood, the usual trigger to breathe. Despite this challenge of consciously remembering to breathe, many children with Ondine's curse can grow up, attend school, and be active thanks to modern ventilation equipment and their family's dedication. Fish Odor Syndrome Fish Odor Syndrome is a metabolic disorder that causes those affected to give off an unpleasant fishy or rotting odor. 
The odor comes from an excessive buildup of trimethylamine, a chemical compound that has a fishy smell. Our bodies normally convert this compound into another odorless form before excreting it. However, in people with fish odor syndrome, there is a deficiency in the enzyme needed to break down trimethylamine properly. As a result, this fishy-smelling chemical accumulates and gets released in a person's sweat, urine, reproductive fluids, and breath, giving off a potent trimethylamine odor reminiscent of rotting fish. Treatment usually involves restricting foods high in nutrients that produce trimethylamines, like eggs, legumes, and some fish. Supplements, antibiotic drugs, or activated charcoal may also help manage episodes when the odor flares. Erdheim-Chester disease Erdheim-Chester disease, ECD, is an extremely rare genetic disease where abnormal cells start growing excessively in different tissues and organs of the body. Around 1,500 cases have been documented worldwide since the disease's discovery. It's not cancer, but these cells can clump together forming masses or lesions. It throws a wrench into your immune system by overproducing these warrior cells called histiocytes. Normally, histiocytes are like bodyguards, patrolling tissues and mopping up invaders. But in ECD, they multiply out of control. These extra histiocytes become unwanted travelers traveling to different organs. This unwelcome invasion can thicken tissues, damage organs, and cause many symptoms depending on where they decide to squat. ECD can affect your bones, making them painful and dense, or mess with your skin, lungs, heart, or brain. Blue Rubber Bleb Syndrome It's a condition where people are born with rubbery, blue-slash-purple raised growths or lumps on their skin and inside their bodies. These abnormal growths are called rubber blebs. The total number of reported BRBS cases is around 200 worldwide. The blebs can appear anywhere on the skin. Some are just small marks, while others are large, disfiguring bumps. But the biggest concern is when these malformed blood vessel growths develop internally in the intestines, lungs, or brain. These internal rubber blebs can bleed or rupture, leading to serious bleeding issues. Intestinal bleeding from growth in the gut is one of the main problems faced by those with this. The blebs are present from birth, but may only be apparent once they gradually increase in size and number as the person ages, sometimes only in adolescence or adulthood. Perineoplastic pemphigus It's an autoimmune disease, which means the body's immune system mistakenly attacks healthy tissues. In this case, it targets proteins that hold skin cells together, causing painful blisters. But it has an even bigger issue. It's almost always linked to an underlying cancer, like lymphoma or leukemia. It's like a two-pronged attack. The body fights itself and a hidden enemy simultaneously. The most obvious sign of PNP is widespread blistering on the skin and mucous membranes, like the mouth and genitals. It can also wreak havoc on internal organs, especially the lungs. This can lead to serious breathing problems. Diagnosing PNP can be tricky because it shares symptoms with other blistering diseases. Doctors looking for clues like the blistering pattern may run tests to rule out other causes and potentially identify the underlying cancer. Unfortunately, there's no single cure for PNP. Treatment focuses on managing the blisters with medications and immunosuppressants while also tackling the underlying cancer if possible. Stufa-Vitamon Syndrome Stufa-Vitamon Syndrome, SWS, is a serious genetic disorder affecting bone development and the body's control system. It disrupts bone development, causing bowed long bones and limited joint movements. On top of that, it messes with the autonomic nervous system, which controls involuntary functions like breathing, temperature regulation, and heart rate. Symptoms of SWS are usually apparent from birth. Infants with SWS will have characteristic skeletal features and struggle with breathing, feeding, and maintaining a normal body temperature. Their bones are dense and malformed, especially in the long bones. Sadly, it is often fatal in infancy or early childhood. However, early diagnosis and proper medical management have significantly increased survival rates. Many people with SWS can now live into adolescence or even adulthood. Neurofibromatosis Type 1 Neurofibromatosis type 1, NF1, is a genetic disorder that primarily affects the growth and development of nerve cells. NF1 can lead to the formation of tumors called neurofibromas, which can grow along the nerves throughout the body, leading to massive growths all over the body. 
These tumors can cause various symptoms depending on their location and size. Some common manifestations include skin discoloration, freckling in the armpit or groin area, and the development of soft, fleshy growths on or under the skin. In some cases, NF1 can also result in complications such as learning disabilities, bone deformities, and an increased risk of certain types of cancers, particularly brain tumors and malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors. Treatment for NF1 is primarily focused on managing the symptoms and complications associated with the condition. People with this often develop multiple brain tumors throughout their life, meaning they need brain surgery almost every year if severe. Cystic Fibrosis Cystic fibrosis, CF, is a genetic disorder primarily affecting the respiratory and digestive systems. In people with this, the body produces thick, sticky mucus that accumulates in various organs, particularly the lungs and pancreas. This mucus buildup can cause respiratory problems such as frequent lung infections, breathing difficulties, and lung damage, meaning you would choke on your own fluids if left untreated. The thick mucus can obstruct the pancreatic ducts in the digestive system, preventing the release of digestive enzymes necessary for proper nutrient absorption. As a result, individuals with CF often experience malnutrition, poor growth, and vitamin deficiencies. Perhaps cruelly, more often than not, individuals with this disease can't be in close contact with other people as you would risk cross-contamination of bacteria in one lung jumping to another. Treatment for CF typically involves a comprehensive approach to manage the symptoms and complications. This may include breathing treatments to help clear mucus from the lungs, antibiotics to treat lung infections, enzyme supplements to aid digestion, and specialized nutritional support. Duquesne Muscular Dystrophy Duquesne Muscular Dystrophy is a severe genetic disorder that primarily affects boys and leads to progressive muscle wasting and weakness. When the gene responsible for ensuring proper muscle growth is absent or defective, muscle fibers become prone to damage and gradually deteriorate over time. The common issue is the progressive weakening of skeletal muscles, which often start in early childhood. The muscles closest to the body's trunk, such as those in the shoulders, hips, and thighs, are affected first. This results in difficulty climbing stairs, rising from a seated position, and raising arms above the head. This worsens and the affected muscles waste away even faster as the disease progresses. This muscle wasting occurs due to the ongoing cycle of muscle fiber damage and inadequate repair. As the disease advances, the muscles responsible for breathing, including the diaphragm and intercoastal muscles, become affected. This can lead to respiratory complications and the need for assisted ventilation. There is no cure for this and eventually the body wastes away and the person is left fully dependent on support. Sneedon syndrome. Sneedon syndrome is an extremely rare disorder that involves two very unusual conditions occurring together, widespread recurring levito rash and recurring strokes even in young patients. The levito rash appears as a purplish discoloration on the skin, especially on the arms and legs. It comes and goes, but never fully goes away. Poorly formed small blood vessels under the skin cause this rash. More concerning are the strokes these patients experience at a young age, often before 45 years old. The strokes are ischemic, meaning they occur when blood flow is blocked to parts of the brain. In Sneedon syndrome, the strokes are believed to be caused by the same blood vessel problems that lead to the levito rash inflamed and clotted small blood vessels. There is no cure, but treatment aims to prevent further strokes by thinning the blood and suppressing the abnormal clotting process.